guys, welcome back. We are taking a look at week three. We're going to be working on plurality today. So this code actually provides you with a lot of code. So the first thing we're going to do is break down what is there so we understand what the code is already doing. And then we're going to focus on our to-dos. So remember, you already should have gone over your specifications. You should have looked at all your hints and all your videos. So we're going to kind of accomplish this step by step. Basically, the specifications complete the vote function and complete the print winner function under these items here. Okay, so that's what we're going to take a look at. But first, let's take a look at what they've given you. Now, they did provide some notes for you. I've kind of tabbed mine out so you can see that I break mine down into something a little bit more understandable. First and foremost, we have the max number of candidates. Now we have defined max as nine. So we're defining what max is, and it's nine in this case. That number is arbitrary. For this program, we're using nine. It could be three candidates, it could be a hundred candidates, but for this particular program, we're using nine. So that's what we've indicated. The candidates must have a name and a vote count, so we define the structure, the string, and the votes, right? This right here, the candidate is not the name of the candidate, but the data type, right? So the candidate is the data type. The array of candidates. So right here, we're defining the array not the int or the string but the data type is candidate and the name is candidates and the population is max okay now we have the number of candidates this is the variable and is the candidate count so we're defining what the candidate count is and that's what we're gonna call it function of prototypes takes a name and input and outputs a winner check invalid usage so arg c less than two because you can't just have two or less candidates you have to have at least three in this particular program population of array of candidates this program uses nine again that's arbitrary but nine is what we've decided or what has been decided for us otherwise right here we're using the word max which we have already previously defined as nine that number would be defined as whatever number we told it to define it as prompt the user for number of votes right here that's just getting the number of votes they didn't even note that i did loop over all the voters to ask for the vote check for an invalid vote so here we're checking if the vote is not for a candidate so if the candidate's name is not voted for or they're voting for someone who's not a candidate this particular function is going to invalidate that vote and say invalid vote then we have display winner of the election that's just going to print the winner update totals given a new vote now we're getting into our to do so what the to do wants us to accomplish is write the vote function. You can't vote for a non-candidate. You have to loop through all the arrays of the candidates. So we're gonna get started as I, as you can see here, they've used a Boolean, which we have already had imported up here. We have string, studio H, and CS50, so we should be fine to go ahead and use the bool expression. So let's get started on that. So the first thing that we're gonna do, as it indicates, is we're gonna loop through the array of candidates. So we're gonna use a for loop. So for and i equal to zero, i is less than the candidate count here i plus plus now remember candidate count was already established for us so that's what we have to keep using and let's get this loop opened here now the first thing that we're going to do is actually work on this note does the name match a candidate if the username matches a candidate update the totals and compare the strings. So we're going to remove that out of there and we're going to put that in our for loop here. So in order to accomplish that we need to nest an if loop in our for loop. So if stir comp name candidate i dot name is equal so equal equal right to zero then what do we want to do let's open our if we want to update that right so candidates i dot votes plus plus we want to increase their number of votes right and we want to return true and close those out else we're going to have the return false okay so print the winner or winners of the elections. So right here, what we're going to do is we're going to find the max votes and print the max vote per person. But first, we need to loop through one by one. So we're actually going to have two for loops here. So they're both going to be four ifs. So let's go over what we need to do because we need to have the if the candidate's votes is greater than the max number of votes and then we need an if the candidate votes is equal to the max number of votes so let's get started on those so first we need to set our max votes to zero right 
so that when each vote goes in it's increasing that number and then we're going to open our first for loop let's actually put an extra space here so for int i equal to zero again when i is less than the candidate count then i plus plus and let's open that up and get our if here this one's going to be for the max number of votes so if any one candidate votes is greater than the max number of votes then max votes equal to candidate I votes now let's move on to our second for loop here we're going to do 4 and I equal to 0 when I is less than the candidate count I plus plus Come on, plus plus. And let's open our if now. So if the candidate i dot votes equals the max number of votes, do our printf. s backslash n candidates i dot name and we should be good okay so let's go over this real quick so what we're doing is first we're creating the new variable we're creating max votes right and we're setting that number to zero then we're looking at each candidate one by one using this loop to see how many votes they have right so if a candidate has more votes than the max number of votes variable which is declared here the computer sets the max votes variable to the number of votes that that candidate has meaning each time that candidate gets a vote that max number is set up and up and up and the person with the most max votes is going to be the winner so after it's checked all the candidates the computer is going to go through the list again and this time here if a candidate has the same number of votes as the max votes variable then it prints their name so if we vote for John twice and no one else max votes is set to two and then here in this line it's gonna say the candidate whose votes is equal to the max votes two for John it's going to print their name so each time a candidate gets a vote max votes goes up from zero via this code here increasing the number each time where the candidate with the most votes which is the max votes variable we've declared is going to be declared the winner now we've used percent i we've used percent d we've used percent c and now we're using percent s so what is percent s this is just a shortened code here the percent s in the printf statement just like i d and c is a placeholder for a string variable. In this case, we're telling the printf function to insert the value of candidate i dot name variable, which is the string. And we're imprinting that at the location we've defined right here in the printf function. So when the program runs, it's going to print out the name of the winning candidate using the percent s string variable placeholder that we've indicated so using percent d percent i percent c and percent s are ways to shorten this code and make it more simplified so let's see how we did so let's first try to make plurality and I have an error on line 74 on stir comp where it looks like I just forgot to close this out properly so let's go ahead and get that updated there should be a second parenthesis right there. And also, I put in stir comp, it's actually just strcmp. So let's try that again. And in this one, it just looks like in my fast moving, I did not spell candidates right. 
So we're just going to get that updated there by removing that extra letter and try it again. This one's another grammatical error here on 92. I put candidate vote when it should have been candidates vote. This is just something I did by moving too fast, to be quite honest. And you can also see that I forgot the S on votes there as well. So I'm going to update both of those. And on 98, I forgot a semicolon. So now plurality makes just fine. Let's go ahead and check it. And we are running successfully. So basically a few typos there just for me typing too fast. So real quick, I just want to look at the lines we did again. We have max votes, which we declared. Now candidates votes and candidate count as well as candidate.name, those were all declared for you. So you had to use those because they were already declared in candidate votes here right here candidate.name candidates.votes okay so those variables were already declared for us so we just reused those and in our code all we told it to do was to set the max number of votes where each time someone got a vote the most number of votes from any candidate became the max vote and the candidate who was equal to that number who set the bar that was obviously going to be our winner so that's what we did here that's what we accomplished the program runs fine minus the few errors that we already fixed up other than that Plurality is looking great. If you have any questions about this code, drop them in the comments. I'm here to help you guys out. Like and subscribe and join the Discord if you guys want to reach me directly. The link is in the bio. So this is CS50. That was Plurality. I'm Devin. And as always, you guys are awesome. We'll see you soon.